Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion on cost behavior. Let's first define cost behavior and then we'll talk about some types of cost behavior. So cost behavior is how costs change as our volume or production level changes. And there are three common uh, cost behaviors that we're going to talk about. The first one that we'll talk about is variable cost. And then we'll discuss fixed costs. And then lastly, mixed costs. Let's start our discussion with variable cost. So variable cost, we're going to start with talking about total variable cost. And when we're talking about variable cost in total, these costs change in direct proportion to changes in volume. So what I want you to remember is these costs that we're talking about here, they act the way you think they will in total. So this number is, or this word is important. They act the way you think they will in total. Now variable cost per unit is slightly different. That remains constant. We're going to see what that looks like here in just a second with a, with a uh, graph. And variable cost is also the slope of a line. And we're going to look at that a little bit later as well. So let's take a look at variable cost here on a couple of graphs. And we can just see how variable costs are changing in total and staying the same on a per unit basis by looking at graphs. So for example, in graph A over on our left here, we can see that at a volume of two, our total variable cost is $6. Now this is in thousands, but I'm gonna keep it as single digits here. So at a unit of two, two units, at a volume of two units, we have a total variable cost of $6. At four, a volume of four, our total variable costs are $12. So you can see as volume is increasing, our total variable costs are also increasing. However, what are they doing on a per unit basis? Well, let's go back to two. At two units, our total variable cost was $6. On a per unit basis, it's $3 per unit. At a volume of four, our total variable cost were $12. On a per unit basis, $12 divided by four is also $3 per unit. So our per unit variable cost stayed the same. Let's look at graph B. So again, at a volume of two, our total variable cost were 20. Our per unit is 10. At a volume of three, our total variable cost is 30 at a per unit of $10. So now you can see variable cost in total changes as the volume increases, but variable cost per unit stays the same. Now let's take a look at fixed cost. So fixed cost we said in total, again, it acts like we think. So fixed cost, we know they're going to stay the same because they're fixed. So if we look at this, at a volume of one, our total fixed costs are $100,000. At a volume of four, our total fixed cost is $100,000. So at any volume, our fixed costs stay the same in total. But what do they do on a per unit basis? Well, at a volume of one, our total is 100,000 and our per unit is 100,000. At a volume of four, our total fixed cost is 100,000, but on a per unit basis, it's $25,000 per unit. Well, let's look at a volume of five. In total, our fixed cost are $100,000, but per unit, it's $20,000 per unit. So you can see fixed cost per unit decrease as our volume increases. You can think about rent, for example. So we're, if we take rent on our factory and we allocate that rent to the number of units that we produce, the more units we produce, the less rent that would get allocated to each unit. So if our rent is $1,000 a month 
and we produce a thousand units, then we could say that we're going to allocate a dollar of our rent to each one of our units. If we produce 2,000 units, then only 50 cent per unit needs to be allocated to each unit to cover our rent. The last cost we'll talk about is mixed cost. And again, this is exactly what it sounds like. It's made up of variable and fixed cost. And this is a diagram that you might see depicting a mixed cost. And oftentimes you won't even see what they've got shown here as this red line. That red line may not even be there because we know that this green line, which is the total cost line, wherever it hits the y-axis, that is your fixed cost because at a volume of zero, we still have those fixed costs like rent. So if we produce no units, we still have to pay our rent. So wherever that cost line, total cost line hits the y-axis, that is designating your fixed cost. Above that line is your variable cost. So that's when your variable costs kick in. So for example, at a volume of 2,000 units, your fixed costs are $8,000. The difference in total cost of 24,000 and 8,000 is $16,000. So $16,000 divided by 2,000 units is equal to $8 per unit, which I already have calculated here for you. Okay, so that's what a diagram of your total cost would look like, which is also sometimes called a mixed cost. Now we know that total variable cost change and total fixed cost stay the same. However, we have to really say within a relevant range. And we're going to see what that means here in just a second. So a relevant range is a band of volume where total fixed costs remain constant within a certain range of volume and where your variable cost per unit remains constant within a certain range of volume. This is what a relevant range of data would look like on a graph. So we can say with, with confidence that between zero and seven units, or volume, whatever we're producing, in this case it looks like it's number of children, so between zero and seven children, must be a daycare, our fixed costs are $20,000. However, beyond that relevant range, fixed costs can change. So between seven and 14, our fixed cost are $40,000, et cetera. So for example, if we have a factory where our capacity is only 1,000 units and we're paying rent on that fac faculty or that facility of $1,000 a month and we have demand for 2,000 units, then we need to get a bigger facility. And that bigger facility may cost us more in rent. So now our rent may be $1,500 at a capacity of 2,000 units. So our rent increased, but it's still a fixed cost within a relevant range of data.